In this video, we will go over the mechanics, signals, and responsibilities of the R2. The R2 has a very difficult position in officiating. They are there to assist the R1 and really help out with net calls and centerline violations. The R1 is focused on watching the ball, so the R2 really has to help out and not just watch the ball, which is very hard on those of us who love the sport. It's hard to not watch the ball, but as the R2, you've got to train your eyes to see the game out of your peripheral and make sure we are keeping our eyes on our responsibility. Some of our areas of responsibility as the R2. Before play, we are going to be watching the receiving team and we are looking for possible alignment faults. But in this video, what we are going to focus on is during play. The R2 has to transition to get to the blocking side. We are going to be watching the net and watching the center line for violations. And we're going to be helping the R1 whenever possible. During play, our primary focus is going to be the players at the net, net faults. No touch with the body is allowed at all, even outside the antenna. This might be a slight modification for from some other leagues that you have been in. There are many different rule sets out there. For VBA, we use a combination of USAV, National Federation rules, um, and then we add some slight modification on a couple other rules as well. So we want to make sure that players are not in the net. This is a safety thing. No part of the body is allowed in the net during play. Centerline faults. Here's another one that's slightly modified. This is our VBA centerline modification. It is permitted to penetrate into the opponent's space under the net, provided that a whole hand or whole foot does not cross the centerline and it does not interfere with the opponent's play. So this means that hands and feet can be on the center line as long as it doesn't interfere with play. Once the full hand or a full foot or any other part of the body crosses onto the other side of the court, it is illegal. That is a center line violation. And the R2 is specifically looking for these things. They are not watching the ball and watching for doubles and watching for prolonged contact. They are focused on the net when the play is at the net and the center line. Our secondary focus will then be to assist with some back row violations, assist with four touches. So if um, the ball is hit into the top of the net and it doesn't quite make it over. The blockers are there, but the ball never hit the blockers hands. And then the player pops it out and touches it four times. We can give our partners, our R1, a subtle four hits signal on our shoulder showing I did not see a touch on that block. The R1 has the actual authority to make that call, but as the R2, you're going to assist and help them out. I did not see a touch. The R1 can go with that if they didn't see it either, or if they said, nope, I saw one, they continue play. And the other primary and secondary focus is make the R1 look good. They have all the pressure on them. They are the ones that everyone is looking at. They are the ones making these calls. Help them out there as much as you can. Make them look good. 
So as the R2, you're going to transition from side to side during play, endeavoring to end up on the blocking side. This is the best position for you to see net violations, center line violations. You don't want to get stuck behind the pole. If you learn how to transition from side to side, it will help you get to your best positioning. This is very difficult to learn how to do. And at the beginning, before you get it down, it is okay to start on the receiving side before the serve and just stay there. Make sure you're in a good position. You're not blocked behind the pole, so you're not missing anything. And just stay there and then practice the transition and you'll start to get it. It'll become easier with time. It's kind of just like a little dance. It's just step over, step back over, step back over, and it's a very small transition window. We'll see some examples here in a few minutes. Like I said, you want to step out, make sure you're not behind the pole. So as the R2, make sure you're stepping out and you're gonna be fully visible and you're going to repeat the R1 signals. So the R1 is going to show point to the right. You will mimic that. You will step out so you're not blocked behind the pole. You'll mimic the point, and then you will mimic why what they saw. You will mimic their out signal. Don't leave the R1 in displaying signals unless you are the one making the call. So let the R1 make the signals. We know that you know the point goes over here and the ball was in, but let the R1 do that. They may have seen a touch at the very last second that you didn't see. Let them make the call, you mimic. Whistle immediately when calling a fault. So if you see a net fault or a center line violation, whistle immediately. Move to the offending side of the net. Display the appropriate signal. Don't do the signal until you're actually there. The moving signals, you might, somebody will miss something. The R1 might not see what you're showing them. So get to the offending side and display the signal. Your starting position as the R2 for your transition. You're going to be standing parallel to the sideline. You don't need to be angled towards the receiving team, but you're going to be watching the receiving team. You're going to be looking at them, trying to figure out if they are out of rotation. Near the center line extended to reduce transition time, you don't need to be five feet away. You don't need to be all the way at the 10 foot line, the attack line. Just be about a foot out Foot off. Make sure you're backed off the pole so you can scan both courts. You can see your benches to your left and to your right in case there's any subs or libero replacements occurring. You can see it all happening. And make sure you are watching the receiving team. That is your responsibility. We are not watching the server. We are watching the receiving team. Your transition happens upon the contact of serve. So you want to get set well before the second contact so that you can help the R1 with different things like down balls, touches, blocks, back row play, some possible ball handling. If the R1 is blocked from seeing it, you can give some help on it. So this means that as soon as the ball is contacted for serve, you are going to transition to the other side. You're going to move to the other side of the net with just a quick step, crossover step. You're, and now you're on the other side. Now you can focus on the net play and the center line. The R2 should be on the blocking, the defensive side of the net. The R2 should be watching the offensive play though to help anticipate the things listed previously as well as the center line faults and net faults. 
This also allows the R2 to anticipate net play or if a ball will clearly cross the net. So as soon as you get to your defensive side, you're on the side of the blockers right now. The first pass just happened on the other side. The setter is about to set the ball and you just are now exactly where you need to be. You are seeing through the net. You saw that first pass and now you start focusing in a little bit more because you know that that setter is putting the ball somewhere in this area now. You are able to focus in, zone in on where that ball is going. That way you know where you're looking at. You know where on the net you need to be focusing on, what area of the center line you need to be focusing on. So don't just stare down the blocker side of the net. I know I said you are focused on that net, you are not watching the ball, but you have to kind of see the ball. As I spoke of earlier, you want to use your peripheral and really start out, start wide, and then bring it in. If you just stare down the blocker side of the net, it can limit what you see on the offensive side. You won't be able to help out your R1 with anything. It creates tunnel vision. It makes the R2 prone to lean in towards the court during net play. You don't need to be leaning. You need to stay open to both sides, and that includes watching the offense so one can see the play develop. You need to know where it's going to go so that you can focus in on it. You can make minor body adjustments to better focus on possible net center line faults, blocks, and touches. Just like the line judge position, position, you don't need to stay in one specific place. If it makes sense for you to move out, for you to open up, if the ball's coming and it looks like it's coming outside the antenna, get into a position that can help you see if it's going outside the antenna or if it can make it inside. Your transition should happen when the players transition off the net. If play is still on the net, you don't want to leave yet. If there was a block and somebody hit it again and it's blocked again and it's just staying in that like six to ten feet right by the net, do not transition. Early transition can lead to missed net and center violation, center line violations while players are still at the net. Late transitioning can cause getting blocked from the net center line play by the pole. That pole gets in our way all the time. It reduces the ability to anticipate and effectively see where the next play is going to develop. And you won't be able to assist your R1 with back row violations. So the R2, remember, they, we want them to be stationary by that second contact of the ball and able to see the attack line through the net and around the pole. So you still, by that second, you still kind of want to be open to seeing everything. Once that second contact, once the setter takes the ball and sets the ball, that's when you start focusing in on where the ball is on the net. Transition with the shoulders square to the sideline and watch the entire play on both sides of the net. Don't turn your back. That will cause you to lose sight of half of the play. So make sure when you're transitioning, you're staying square to the net. You are not just turning and walking over and then turning and walking over. Stay open to everything. And just remember over and over again, don't follow the ball. We cannot be just watching the ball. We cannot lose sight of the um, net. Here is an example of everything that you should not be doing. Watch our R2 across the net. They are not watching the net. They are watching the ball. Their transitioning is awful. They get stuck behind the pole. They're leaning around it. They can't see anything. Let's take a look. So clearly watching the ball, lazily walking back and forth, not on the right side of where she's supposed to be, just missed the net right there, still just watching the ball. 
we've got to keep our eyes where they belong. <laughs> Concentration is definitely key. Let's watch it. this one now. Here's a different play. Oh, she kind of watched the net there. Now she's just leaning around, getting stuck behind the pole. She's on the wrong side completely. Didn't call the net violation. Didn't do anything there. Not helping out the R1 at all. She was kind of useless. Here's another example of things not to do. First of all, the whistle's not even in his mouth. He couldn't even blow his whistle when he saw that net violation right there. And he's just leaning around, getting stuck behind that pad right there on the pole. Couldn't see anything. Here is the proper way to do a transition. We'll watch this a couple times. Transitions, watching pass, set, hit. Transitions, pass, set. Oh, somebody was in the net. All right, let's watch that one more time. Transitioning, kind of watching the play happen. Play left the net, so he transitioned again. What he did there at the end, he blew his whistle. He got to the fault side. He told the R1, there was a net violation. It was this number. The R1 said, I agree, and awarded the point, and our R2 mimicked the point. Let's watch one more time for that, and watch the footwork. He's not getting out super, super far, but he's getting into good positioning so that he can see the play happening. Does a little sidestep there, and back step, tweet. Net, this number, I agree. All right, award the point. That is what we want to look like. Until you're able to really do this, you can, like I said, just stay on the receiving team side and make sure you are focusing on the net. Start practicing though, little by little. If you get off, if the play ends up, you know, three times in a row, it got blocked, stay put. You don't need to move. If you get off and you are you find yourself on the attacking side instead of the blocking side, take a second, let the play happen. Don't stand behind the pole. Make sure you are out so you can see the whole net, so you can see the play. And then once the play gets back onto the other side, you can transition again. Couple other little things that you do as the R2, besides your main focus on the net and the center line, are substitutions. In VBA, we don't have a ton of substitutions. Um, most of the time, the teams don't have that extra player or extra few players to sub. But if you do, it's a double whistle, tweet, tweet, sub, and you can allow them in, then get back to your receiving side and give the court back to your partner. If you're already on the receiving side, you can go ahead and just stay over there.
make you guys the best officiating team out there.